Lightroom's new Denoise is powered by AI and it's pretty amazing, but is it better than Topaz Denoise? In this video, I'm gonna put the two head to head and we'll see who comes out on top. You might be surprised at the results. Hi, my name's Charlotte Reeves. I'm from Unleash Education and you've tuned into another editing toolbox video where we share a quick tip, trick or technique to help make your pet photography editing life easier. Now, I've been a user of Topaz Denoise for quite a while now and I love it. It does amazing things for really noisy images and it also really helps to improve the quality of images that are a bit noisy but also need a little bit of a sharpen as well. So when Lightroom introduced its new Denoise, it's powered by AI, I just had to test it. And as you'll see in this video, the results are pretty interesting. So let's just dive straight into this. I'm gonna test this out with a really noisy image that I took recently. Uh, it was shot at ISO 8000, which is pretty high, and it's also underexposed a little bit too. So generally when you're having to also lighten an image or pull some light into the shadows, it's gonna introduce even more noise. So this image here, pretty much worst case scenario. So this is the raw file. Now I've done some edits. I'm just going to apply these. And this is the edited image. And as you can see, I've brightened it up, I've warmed it up, I've got some more detail in the shadows. It is actually in pretty sharp focus, but as you can see, it's super, super noisy. So what I've done here is added some noise reduction using Lightroom's traditional sharpening and noise reduction sliders. So I've added some amount and radius sharpening. I've also added some masking so it only sharpens the things that I want to sharp. So I've taken that up a fair way so that it doesn't sharpen the noise even further. That's really important. I've also added some, they call it manual noise reduction now. So I've added some luminance detail. I've added a lot of color noise reduction because there was heaps of color noise in the original. And this is pretty much as good as it gets. So this is the best I can do in Lightroom. Now, I'm gonna take this image into Photoshop because Photoshop's where I always use Topaz because I always like to do it on a separate layer so I can dial it back a little bit if I need to. So I'm gonna export this right now to Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop with this image. Now, I'm gonna come back to this in a second. For now, we're gonna go back to Lightroom. So now I'm going to use Lightroom's new denoise feature. It's stupidly easy to use. It's basically just click a button and it's done. Actually, two buttons. So over here under noise reduction, we now have a button that says denoise. So all we need to do is click this button here. Underneath you'll see it's telling you what it will do. So it will reduce noise with AI and the result will save as a new DNG. So a DNG stands for digital negative and it's basically just another type of raw file. It's a more generic sort of style raw file. So when you use this tool, it is actually creating a copy of the file. Now I'm not really a fan of creating extra things when you don't need to, but I feel that this works so well, it's justified in creating additional copies of the file. The great thing about the DNG is you can adjust it to your heart's content just the same way as you would with a normal raw file. So more about that later. Let's click this button and see the magic happening. So we'll click denoise and it's gonna give you a preview here. And as you can see, that loaded really quickly to show you what you're getting at the moment. So if you just click and hold, it will show you <laughs> what it was like before. Now, that is what it was like before you made those adjustments uh, with the sliders. So basically, to be able to apply the denoise, it takes all of those manual adjustments away first. So when I click here, it's actually showing us what the image would look like with absolutely no manual noise reduction done at all. But look at the difference. Isn't it incredible? So we have one slider that we can play with here and that is basically just the amount of denoise that we want. Now, this is a pretty noisy image, so I'm gonna take this slider up a bit, maybe to around 70. And as you can see, the noise in the background has been greatly reduced, but it hasn't all been pulled out completely. And that's what I really love about Lightroom's denoise. It doesn't just obliterate all the noise in the image. I always feel that if you are just taking all the noise out, it starts to look like a computer rendered graphic or some sort of illustration. With the noise in there, it still looks like a photograph. So I really appreciate that some noise is left in. Now let's have a look at the details. So check out the detail you can see 
in the black fur here. I mean, this is just amazing. And also the white fur. It's just absolutely incredible. So I always make sure that create stack is ticked. So this will actually stack the new DNG file on top of the raw file. So down the bottom, it's actually gonna just show the one image. So let's just go enhance. And as you can see at the top left there, it's creating the DNG using denoise. Okay, so we have a new DNG that has been denoised. Let's zoom in and have a little look around. Have a look at the quality here. It's absolutely incredible. So let's just compare this to the pre-denoise file. So I'm gonna just click the two and that will unstack those two files. So this one here on the right, so that is our non-denoised, our rather noisy file. And the one on the left is our denoised file. So let me get these up side by side for you. All right, so we're comparing the two images now. The one on the left is pre-denoising, the one on the right is after the denoising. And just scrolling around, you can really see the difference between these two images. It is absolutely incredible what Adobe has been able to do here. Just the detail in the shadows, the fact that the blacks in the dog still look black. Often when you apply denoise, you'll get that grayish kind of look, but I absolutely love the way the blacks have been retained in this. And then we have a look in the highlight areas. So look at the bokeh up here and just look how smooth that is. It's just so incredibly smooth, but there is still just a little bit of noise in there. So it still does look like a photograph. So look at the detail in the water there. Just incredible. Okay, now we're gonna hop over to Photoshop. I'm gonna to apply Topaz Denoise to the image that we exported before. And then I'm gonna pop that back in here and we'll compare them all. So I have this image in Photoshop. I'm gonna to apply Topaz Denoise. I generally always duplicate the background layer first and then apply the denoise to that background layer. I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for this, but let's go into Topaz Denoise AI. Now this image here is pretty noisy. So I'm thinking low light, probably not gonna cut it. It's just processing that now. And this is the result that it's given us using the low light setting. So as you can see, it's definitely taken some noise out of the background, but it's really quite patchy. It's given us a pretty substandard result really. So I'm thinking this is because it's got so much noise in there. So let's go the next level up. Let's click severe noise and see how it does with this. Okay, so this is the result with severe noise. And this is pretty much as good as we're gonna get in here. So let's just go apply. So normally I would dial that opacity back a little bit on that layer to sort of reduce the effect a little bit, but for the purposes of comparison, I'm just gonna leave that at 100%. I'm gonna flatten this image and then I'm gonna save it. We'll jump back into Lightroom so we can compare them. Okay, so now we are comparing on the left is Topaz, on the right is Lightroom. This is the head-to-head -head comparison. So you probably be able to see the background first. Now, how much smoother it is in the Lightroom version. The Topaz version is quite sort of speckledy and patchy. Moving down into this out of focus area down in the front left here, you'll see how smooth the result is on the Lightroom denoise version. Let's head back and have a look at the detail. So even the colors that have been pulled out of the image are just so much better, more vibrant, more contrasty in the Lightroom denoise version. You'll notice the tan on the dog's face is a lot more vibrant in the Lightroom version. The blacks are a lot nicer. They're a lot deeper. They've got more contrast. There's more detail. Same with the whites. Let's have a look up in this area where there's some highlights and out of focus stuff in the background, some bokeh. So see around the edges of this very bright piece of bokeh here, it kind of looks a little bit sort of chunky around the edges. Whereas here, it's super, super smooth. It's really quite amazing. So basically everywhere you look in this, you really, really notice the difference. So my conclusion, <laughs> obviously I really prefer the Lightroom denoise. It's a lot easier to use, even though it creates that extra DNG file, that's not a problem at all. You can still copy and paste adjustments between DNGs and your camera's native RAW files, and it's not gonna affect the image badly. You can do the denoise at the start of the process, you can do it at the end, it doesn't make any difference. 
And really, I prefer the denoising to happen more towards the start of the workflow rather than leaving it to the end. It means that the raw data is being used. That's probably why the result is so good. And I think it really takes less time as well overall and just gives you a better result. You can't argue with that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been really fun to create for you. Go out, have a play with the new denoise in Lightroom Classic and also Adobe Camera Raw as well. Have fun and don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think. You've been listening to Charlotte Reeves of Unleashed Education. I'll catch you next time.